Welcome. Today, I thought I'd demo how to do full dancer's pose using a strap. So before we move into it, just make sure that you are really warmed up. So you've done a few sun salutations, maybe some stretches to your psoas and the front of your hips, your quadriceps femoris. The traditional variation of dancer's pose has us with hands to heart, with the right arm out so that as you draw your right heel towards your bum, you can scoop up the inside arch of your right foot with your right hand. From there, slinging your right shoulder blade onto your back, you want to try to start with your hips pointing forward, your knees pointing down as much as feels accessible in those hips, and a little length to lower back as a counterbalance to eventually starting to kick your right heel, in this case, as if to a wall that's behind us. The reason why I like to do dancer's pose with the left hand pointing up towards the ceiling as opposed to bowing forward is that one day we might go into the deeper variations of dancer's pose, which I thought I'd demo for you today. So for this variation, you'll need a yoga strap. And if you don't have one around the house and someone doesn't mind that you borrow their tie, you can use a tie or really anything else, um, preferably that's a little thicker. If it's too thin, you don't want to cut off circulation to your foot. So to do this, we're going to step right in the middle of the strap with the right foot. Take both edges of the strap together and put them between your big toe and your second toe. So you've created what essentially looks like a little summer sandal. So I'm now going to take both edges of the strap outside the pinky toe blade of my right foot. I'm going to bend the right knee heel towards my bum and kind of sling the right shoulder onto the back. So this time, I'm going to reach the right arm up and over, the left arm also not only up, but over so I can grab both edges of the strap. So same thing here applies. Try to lengthen the lower back, pointing it down towards the floor as a counter pose to starting to kick your foot as if to the wall that's behind you. Now, for this one, try not to let the elbows go wide. Whoop. Try to hug the elbows in and up so that the upper arms frame your ears. You can walk your hands closer towards your toes. Note that if you're going to fall out of this pose, just let go of the strap. And from here, one day it's more reasonable to believe that you can get rid of your strap altogether and you'll just be holding on to your right big toe. Transfer the strap into your right hand when you're ready to release. And with hands onto your mid back, just puff up your kidneys and adrenals with a huge breath here. And at once ground, but find more length. So I'll show you kind of two more um, variations of dancer's pose. The first one is similar. We're going to take right arm beside us, palm facing up, right knee bends, heel to bum. And instead of scooping up the inside arch of the foot with your right hand, see if you can snuggle the top of your foot towards your right elbow crease. And from here, notice that I'm flexing my toes back, so they're also hooking on to my lower arm. Same as before, I try to start by pulling the knees together as much as my flexibility will allow and lengthening the lower part of your back as you kind of zipper up the pelvic floor. Left arm up. As you start to kick, notice how much those right toes are working. You might cup your skull with your left hand. And it's almost as if you're trying to pull your neck up from shoulders to skull. You could stay here or maybe you can find your fingers to clasp onto an arm variation that's similar to Go Mukasana, if you know that one. So again, transfer the energy into your right. As you release down, you might take a deep breath into your back. Thing about back bends is that they can be really energizing. The adrenals get a little healthy massage, compression. Whew. Your heart is open. You might feel it beating a little faster. Good reminder how alive you are. So the final variation of dancer's pose is full dancer's pose. The reason why I showed you this last one, it's called mermaid. 
first is because it might actually help take you into the full expression of the pose. So again, before trying any of this, make sure that that right quad is really well opened. You can do this towards the end of a practice. Just make sure you're not too tired to hold it. So similar as that mermaid pose before, I like to start here for full dancers. The palm of right hand is facing up, which is helpful. So my thumb will be on the bottom of my foot, my fingertips in the top of my foot. And now, like when I was using the strap, I'm just going to reach that right elbow up and upper arms hug the ear. You can point to the ceiling with left hand, you can cup the base of your skull, or you can hold on to that right big toe. When you're ready to come out, hands to lower and mid-back, big breath. At once ground, but lengthen. And then feel what you feel. So with all of these poses, there's so many benefits to them. You have the balance on one leg, which can balance the hemispheres of brain as much as body. When you're standing on one leg, it's hard to think about anything else in the world, so it brings focus. This one is great to use the flexibility you've created in your quads, the front of your belly, open shoulders, open chest, open tricep. So those are some things to look forward to in the rest of your practice that will eventually help you blossom into whatever expression of dancer's pose you love. So even if it's not holding your leg behind your head in full dancer's pose that's important to you, perhaps it's having a goal or vision or something new to practice that's transforming, that's inspiring for you. So thank you so much for practicing with me today. Namaste.